So in this screencast, I'm going to be going over the three primary steps uh, that are described in the blog post. Uh, the first is preparing an AWS account. Second is launching the stack. And then finally, it is uh, testing the deployment. So in um, preparing the AWS account, if you don't currently have an AWS account, you can go to aws.amazon.com. You can follow the, uh, the instructions described there. You're going to want to make sure that you have access to CloudFormation because that will give you access to CloudFormation. Also, many of the other resources uh, that are described in the blog post. Second thing you want, want to do is go to the console and select the region. Um, and the region should be the Northern Virginia region for this particular example. And last part is to create an a, uh, EC2 key pair. And so to do that, you're going to go to the EC2 console and you'll go to key pairs and then you'll create a key pair. Um, they also have described uh, this process um, here in the substep and also there's a link uh, that describes this as well. So that's kind of the key assumptions that you have AWS account and you have a key pair. Um, and then, so the second um, step is to launch the stack. And so you can launch the stack directly from the blog post by clicking on the launch stack button. And it brings you to the call formation console. We'll select next. Uh, you can modify the stack name if you want. Otherwise, just uh, select the EC2 key pair name that you created before. Um, enter the email address. And then uh, you'll want to enter a unique uh, re repository name. This is for the code commit uh, git repository. And then you can leave all the defaults, uh, default parameter values here and hit next. And then we'll want to make sure that we um, do not roll back on failure so we can see any errors that, if they do occur. And then we'll select the two checkboxes and hit create. So this will take about seven minutes to run through uh, the, the stack creation and once it's finished we'll uh, come back to this console. Okay we can see that the stack has successfully completed and so we can select the stack and you can see some of the events that have been created and some of the resources um, as a part of those events. So you can see that uh, the, a pipeline, co-pipeline um, has been generated along with an application deployment group in code deploy um, and then the kind of the key resource here in this uh, solution, which is um, the code commit repository, along with some of the other supporting resources such as um, the SNS topic, IAM role, uh, and so on. So uh, let's go to the outputs tab. And there's many useful um, outputs here. Uh, the first of which is the URL for code pipeline. And so this is, um, so as a part of the CloudFormation template, it provisions um, a pipeline in code pipeline. You can see uh, that there are a couple of stages here and in action each stage. We have a source stage and a beta stage. Um, in the source stage, you see that it's failed. So the reason it's in a failed state is because as part of the CloudFormation stack generation, it created a code commit repository. Um, and the code commit repository is empty. And so therefore it failed on the, uh, the source action here. So there are steps in the test deployment step that describe how to uh, to get around this problem. Um, and so the first thing you want to do is um, do a git clone um, of the uh, repository on your uh, local environment. So your computer, EC2 instance, whatever. Um, and so what you do is you go back to the CloudFormation um, outputs and you find the clone URL SSH. And you can copy that. And there's a description here about how to connect to the code commit repository via SSH. So you can cl click on that. I'm going to assume that you've gone through that. Uh, and so you do uh, git clone locally. So I type git clone. And then I've, um, I've cloned the empty repository. And then I'm going to download the sample app. This is a static website. Uh, so it's a sample app Linux and it has uh, code deploy a configuration, so an app spec YAML file. So I'm going to download this. And then I'm going to put that file um, in my local directory. So let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my local repository. I'm going to paste uh, the sample app Linux. And then I'm going to unzip this. I'm going to take the files and move them to the root area. And then I'm just going to remove these files. Okay, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go through the steps that I described in the blog. 
I'm going to actually I'm going to CD first. Add. I'm going to commit the files. Let's see those files got committed. And then I'm going to push it up to code commit. Okay. And so we're going to go back to the code pipeline. And you'll see that code pipeline, so code pipeline is pulling the code commit repository and looking for any changes. And when it discovers those changes, it then initiates a pipeline. So we can see that it picked up the change and it's going through the process of uh, getting the artifacts from code commit uh, as part of this stage in this action. Okay, you can see that it's successfully completed the source stage in action. And so it's now going through the beta stage and, and it's running the demo fleet action, which is running uh, code deploy and deploying the application um, onto the EC2 instance on which the code deploy agent is installed. Okay, we can see that the pipeline has successfully completed. So if we go to the instructions, we can access the application um, by first going to the uh, deployments and you can actually get access to that from the output uh, of the CloudFormation stack. So um, we can click on the URL here and then select the most recent deployment click on the instance ID and then we'll just copy the public IP and we can see that we successfully deployed the application so if we want to now make changes to it um, we're going to go to our local copy uh, and uh, make some changes first thing I'll do is uh, find a color that I, so I want to change something visual uh, to the application so I'm gonna find this color I'm gonna get the hexadecimal and then I'm going to open up the index file. Okay. And then I go to the background color. I'm going to change this. And I'm going to change something visual and also something in text. Uh, updated color to green. And I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to commit the changes. Let's go back to the instructions. So I actually changed it from the green, but I just uh, took the same commit, and then we're just going to push it up. Okay, so we're going to go back to code pipeline. Code pipeline is you know pulling the code commit repository all along the way. So it's going to pick up these changes and it's going to run through the actions that are defined you know, in this pipeline. So it's changed to blue. We can see it's in progress and it's running through uh, the actions to get the latest uh, changes from the code commit repository. So it's now running through the action in the uh, beta stage in the demo fleet action. So it's running a code deploy uh, deployment. Okay, we can see that both of the um, stages have successfully completed. So the pipeline uh, is complete. We can go now to the application, refresh it. And we can see that it updated the changes uh, based on what I had committed. Um, and so it went through those uh, the stages in code deploy um, and took the changes out of code commit. Um, and so the next step we're going to go through, uh, and the last step is running this from the command line, uh, for the same process. And so if you look at the step two, uh, you can see that there's a CLI example as well. So what we're doing in this step uh, is exactly what we did in the launch stack step with launch stack where we were using the cloud formation console in this case we're going to use uh, the uh, AWS CLI and so we're going to start with the base command we're going to run this um, from a location where we have installed and configured the AWS CLI so that could be locally on our computer or EC2 instance or, or what have you and so uh, we're going to prepend this base command to um, to parameters and the way we're going to do that is first we're going to take this base command uh, and then we have these two options first option is a custom parameters uh, JSON file uh, and the second option is to pass the parameters along the uh, the command line and so that's the second option is the one we're going to use but if you want to use the first option there's an example file and you can just modify the values in that example file and pass it along as described in the uh, in that option and so we're, we're going to take this command and go to an EC2 instance and then we're going to run it. And we can see that it's successfully started uh, the stack creation process. 
So it's going to take the same uh, amount of time. Uh, we're not going to wait for the seven minutes uh, to, to go through this process in, in uh, seven minutes. Uh, and instead, uh, if you have any questions um, or, uh, or comments, just uh, reach, reach out to us on Twitter at Stelgen or uh, at Paul Duvall. Thanks a lot.